Hello everyone. The following presentation will be over a condition of the foot called hallux valgus, and it will be given by physical therapy students Anna Harpst, Martha Bejarano, and Taylor Clark from the PT program at Texas State University. Hallux valgus, also known as a bunion, is defined as a medial deviation or prominence of the first metatarsal head along with lateral deviation of the hallux. Here we have a 23-year-old female who had bilateral congenital hallux valgus and the left was corrected with a chevron bunionectomy in December of 2010. This provides a before and after visual, although it's important to note that the hallux valgus in the right foot is more pronounced than the left one was prior to surgery. The exact cause of hallux valgus is unknown, but there are several factors that can cause one to become more susceptible of developing this condition. Contributing factors include, but are not limited to, biomechanical instability, arthritic conditions, neuromuscular disease, traumatic compromise, and a variety of structural deformities. The two most common risk factors for hallux valgus are gender and age. Females are anywhere between two to four times more likely to develop hallux valgus than males, and one's chance of developing hallux valgus increases as they age. There is a genetic predisposition to hallux valgus and has been seen to run in the family, but there is no known racial predisposition. Hallux valgus is a major contributor to forefoot surgery costs. Individuals with hallux valgus often experience foot pain and their functional abilities are affected, causing poor balance, gait pattern impairment, and falls in older adults who are more likely to have this condition. Harmful effects of val hallux valgus include, but are not limited to, painful joint range of motion, joint deformity, painful and increased difficulty with specific footwear, altered lifestyle and or decreased activity, as well as a variety of associated foot disorders. Prognosis. Hallux valgus is a progressive disorder and deformity will progress until the patient seeks surgical intervention. Research does show that patients do receive positive gains following the correction of hallux valgus via surgical intervention. Reoccurrence can happen and it's generally multifactorial one of those factors that is used to predict reoccurrence in patients is a greater preoperative hallux valgus angle. Diagnosis. Radiographs are used to confirm clinical diagnosis. The following radiographs are the most common radiographs used to identify the severity of hallux valgus as well as determine the type of surgical intervention needed. Blood and urine tests can also be used as differential diagnosis to rule out rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, collagen vascular disease, as well as gout. Physical examination. The clinician should focus their physical examination on the vascular, dermatological, neurological, and muscular skeletal systems of their patient. The muscular skeletal assessment should be divided into two components, the determination of etiology, as well as the evaluation of the resultant pathology. Assessment of the resultant pathology should further be divided into weight-bearing and non-weight-bearing evaluations, as these two components yield important information for determining the appropriate treatment protocol. The physical examination key component is observation. The patient will present with medial deviation of the first metatarsal and or lateral rotation of the hallux. The patient will also complain of non-acute onset of deep, sharp, or burning pain in the first metatarsal phalangeal joint during ambulation. The patient may also report feeling greater pain when shoes are worn. Pain can consist of intermittent, persistent, mild, or severe pain, and again is generally the reason why the patient seeks treatment. Here is a non-conservative approach intervention. Several algorithms are used to decipher the appropriate surgical approach. The main two that I read the most about were uh, distal metatarsal osteotomy as well as proximal metatarsal osteotomy. So here are the three terms used the most often. Hallux valgus angle is uh, the line from the center of the first met. Intermetatarsal angle is also referred to in the literature for diagnosing how the severity in the radiograph, as well as the uh, distal metatarsal articular angle. 
Overall, there's about 120 different operation techniques with a 10% reoccurrence rate. This article was published in the Biomed Central Journal by Dinek et al. in 2008. 115 patients were studied over a two-year follow-up and reported on the ankle and foot outcomes measure. The purpose of the study was to evaluate the influence of parameters before surgery on the ankle for correction of pelvic valgus. Overall, um, patients with an HBA angle of 37 degrees or more had good correction in 65% that were seen, and the remaining 35 had developed recurrence for health valgus. So overall, the HBA angle was determined as the main radiological predictor for successful correction of health valgus. So this brings me into the next study by Spruce from the Foot 21 Journal published in 2011. And this was uh, research done on the foot health status questionnaire on patients that had received their hallux valgus surgery. And basically, these researchers looked at this tool and looked at the MID data, which was the minimum important difference of this scale, and figured that since they analyzed the scores, the FHSQ demonstrated that 94% of the population reported much better or better ratings overall postoperatively. Here are the results from the FHSQ. Below you can see which one was much better, better, same, and a little worse. Here's the conservative approach to hallux valgus. Night pads, bunion pads, daily exercise are all used. Conservative approaches alleviate pain and palliative care. However, the non-conservative approach is the only way that it can be corrected. This part of an orthopedic clinic study in Iran, it was uh, in the Acta Medica Irania Journal in 2012. Two groups of 30 patients were followed and uh, they wore a design splint as opposed to the market splints that are the interdigital pads. They were followed eight hours per day and followed every three months for a year. And it showed that the design splint caused more of a decrease in the angle variation versus the, the night splint bilaterally and was statistically significant. So um, this design splint was more um, aesthetically pleasing, it didn't attract attention, it was accommodable to more uh, terrain. And here are the results for that study. Overall, the design uh, splints were better, they were cost effective as opposed to um, the night splints that were worn. This is another study that uh, analyzed the manipulation and mobilization therapy for hallux valgus first wearing just plain night splints without therapy intervention. Four treatments over a two-week period were seen. Uh, this is published in the Foot 21 journal in, two, in 2010, and um, it showed that there was no statistical difference between the two groups based on outcome measure scores. However, at the end, um, the manual therapy and mobilization group regressed less than one month than the night splints group, who regressed after a week. So I can show you that um, the MMT group had a uh, longer regression difference than with just the night splint intervention. These are the following post-op considerations. Take a moment to review underneath what is um, looked at in physical therapy. This is the last case study that we found. It was on 62 females. All men were excluded. And it referred back to the genic literature previously in this PowerPoint. The bottom line of the research just reiterated that the hallux valgus angle greater than 40 degrees can be a risk factor for reoccurrence. If it's less than 15 or equal to and the IMA angle is less than 10, then most likely there's a decreased chance that you'll have reoccurrence. So in summary, the primary treatment for the choice of hallux valgus is the non-conservative surgical approach. PT intervention is effective, yet does not resolve this progressive disorder overall. Uh, there's still limited research on the postoperative intervention, and therefore further studies need to be conducted in order to determine a beneficial treatment protocol. And here are our references. Thank you very much for your time.